Um, I don't even think they're a right-wing party anymore um, or a conservative party anymore. Their policies are, 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 are quite left-wing, which is not what people want. Unfortunately, there's no party with enough um, with enough mo- with enough of a moral compass on the right that can actually replace the Tory party right now. The only option is is you actually have a, a right wing politician like was a, like a Winston Churchill type character who's going to come out of the um, come out of the back benches that we haven't seen yet, who's uh, who's got the balls to be able to take to take it all on. Well, I think, as I said, as we said before, Boris Johnson is just waiting for his chance, isn't he? Yeah, but again, he's another player. He, he's, the one, he, he's a guy who plays the political system. Now, if he decides to model Winston Churchill in terms of making the, of making the decisions which he, he believes is right for the country rather than right for himself, I can see that. But um, this is where it comes back to legacy. Boris Johnson's legacy was also to become prime minister. And the thing is, I'm not sure well, whether... His goal is to become prime minister, not the legacy. It, it's, it's, well... A legacy is a goal, in effect. <laughs> yeah. No, legacy is what's left behind you after you've finished everything. A, a legacy is what you want to get recognised for, for reaching your goal. Yes. All right. Um, and the thing is, if he actually did it properly, and if, he, and, if, uh, and if a legacy is what he actually wants to achieve, then he may have to be a bit provocative and ruffle a few feathers. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he actually looked at someone like the Donald Trumps of this world and actually see do you know what um, I'm actually you know I'm taking notice of what's actually happening over there even though it's not a popular choice but the more unpopular he's becoming with the Democrats who are now going more left wing over there or more socialist over there he's becoming more popular with the rest of the country because when the country is actually in a better position and they're getting more money and they're getting more better paycheck and things like that they're actually they're actually overall happier and it's inter- that's, that's interesting and of course it, it, you also made me think about uh, Boris Johnson and um, Trump as individuals and, and they, their personalities and of course they're, they're really both not very nice people sorry they're both of them are not very nice people who hey, Boris Johnson and Donald no. Trump no and, and again we talked about the fact that CEOs are there's a higher coincidence of psychopathy among CEOs and again, it's interesting. Whilst I was um, uh, I, I was in the in the high courts of justice this week, and uh, and I was queuing for something, and in front of me there were some junior solicitors, and they were all girls. And I was thinking to myself, well, there's the there's the um, anxious and erectic. Um, there is the disagreeable um, career chaser, and and. They were all. Dis- they were all almost certainly disasters on a family social level, and um, remember what we said that that it is the disagreeable people who tend to succeed. Um, and again, talking about women and the pressures on women in today's society, um, I don't know whether you heard of the cover of Cosmopolitan magazine this week uh, they, no it's not part of my they, literature they but. put there was it was a topic of discussion on the news because they put a enormously obese female m- young uh, model tattoos. is that the one i'm not sure i, mean, uh, I, 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 I don't I think, think i, I could I, bear I to it, look i think it came up in one of my news feeds actually yeah. saying that but i didn't know i didn't realize it was in and, that and, magazine and they were very careful to to give her some form of praise as they were describing her she was praised for being large fat. no no they were trying to give her some form of praise after describing her her rotundity by saying that she was at least very attractive well i'll tell you right now i don't think there was the slightest thing that was attractive about her at all no she's a morbidly obese young woman and to get to that state can you imagine what her diet must be like well it's nice it's, it's it's not that I, I i can't understand i mean you know what I've seen hundreds of these um, fattest type type debates going on about women, you know, I'm happy in my own body and things like that. And I'm thinking, well, one, how could you be? And, and secondly, why would you actually... Def- why would, I, d- I don't know why you would even want to defend it. Correct. It, you and know, you don't have any energy. People perceive you. People look at you. You know, you can't, you, you can't be comfortable. You know, the only way it's going to be comfortable is because you're using it as a protection shield or bit armor to actually protect you from what's really going on yeah. i mean the, the only possible positive 
connotation was at least it was not yet another facsimile of an of an anorectic model because again that's that's what people have suffered from from too long and why not just show healthy normal people just attracted beautiful healthy normal people so for instance greek greek and roman statues were all about healthy beautiful normal people and that 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 is seen by the world and society as the ideal not not stick thing anorectics and not morbidly obese females with a body mass index of somewhere in the mid 30s and the pressures on young women there's another article about this the pressures on young women at school for instance there there is a, an increasing number of young women trying to harm themselves there is an increasing number of women with eating disorders such as anorexia which is an illness where you have a distorted body image where you're constantly trying to make yourself thinner even though intellectually you know you're thin but you can't help trying to make yourself even thinner you look in the mirror and you'll call yourself fat um, and then there are also women with uh, binging and vomiting who will binge and vomit and and all of this yet is obesity is increasing so I don't know where the right. stats are with this well thing. well, you, for one, one is where the with anorexia is. you've got this illusion of control if you can't control your world there's too much pressure on you at least you control your immediate environment i.e. your body with binging and vomiting it's it's a it's a sense of release of stress so you you stuff yourself and stuff yourself and stuff yourself because again that that it, the people eat to try and feel better and then they if they if they don't feel better then the release of vomiting might well make them feel better and of course if you do this long enough and enough times the acid in your stomach will erode your teeth and make them rotten and also uh, if you have to put your hands down your throat to make yourself vomit then the vomit will actually start eroding your nails and it gives you pitted nails and that happens often enough that they were named after a psychiatrist called Russell so Russell's sign is pitted nails on women's hands who are binging and vomiting and therefore the, the this is an indication of the intense pressure on young ladies so you have and then of course some people will just comfort eat which is which is goes well, on to your but, but you know what I, look uh, i mean I, I, i'm surprised because I, I i've seen plenty of girls i mean even you know they talk about if you're if if the you know if one year parents is overweight then there's a 50 percent chance that the child's going to be overweight if both parents are overweight then there's a 75 percent chance that the, that the kid is going to be overweight and I, I see some of the kids and i'm thinking actually as parents, and we, this is when it goes back to legacy. I'm thinking, this, you know, don't we? Don't, shouldn't we show an example? Um, and in fact, actually, because we do a lot of intermittent fasting at home now, um, apart from the odd occasion, you know, my daughter's now back. You know, she's she's probably, you know, uh, we're, we're looking to teach her not to be, not eat food for the sake of eating food, not you know, eat food out of necessity. And actually, if you actually enjoy it every now and then as a reward, then great. Um, I'm not sure that's the right way to go, but um, we've gone past that stage of having every single different meal. I mean, we're actually quite boring eaters at home now, but we are going down towards because the only time we're actually... Oh, no, no, no. You, you have tried to work out ways of making your food tastier, and you describe to me slow cooking. I do, I do, you, I do you slow cooking. I mean, you know, chicken is our main, main, main part of our diet, so... We use a slow cooker, and the thing is, look, we, we flavour it with either coriander and lime is one thing, or or um, or chipotle type uh, thing. There, there's there's a number of ways you can approach it, and we've got obviously we've cut down on our carbs as well. Um, and so if you're eating less, then your palate becomes more sensitised, so you're able to appreciate the nuances of taste. Absolutely. And by the way, I should have said that binging and vomiting, as well as causing a release of tension, is actually addictive. And, uh, and one of the main... Well, anything main that's going to make you feel better is addictive. Yeah, and if well, you actually vomit... It depends. If, it, if it increases your dopamine, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the treatments is... One of the treatments, although of course we're not licensed to give medical advice, is terpyramate, and one of the one one of the one, one of the things that terpyramate does is is modulate your dopamine release. 
as well as being an anti-epileptic. Okay. Well, guys, well, I'd like you to thank you very much for listening. We're not going to be around over the next... Uh, how long are you away in Greece for? Actually, we'll manage to do a podcast uh, because we, we can do one on the Monday morning. So, so how long are you going for? I'm just going for a week. Going for a week. So um, we, will, we will actually see. We'll have to play that one by ear. But um, if, you can, if you can't wait the anticipation, we'll attempt to get one out for next week. But if not, it'll probably be about two weeks um, mm-hmm. due to the uh, Greek holiday. I think he's going to his big, fat, bulimic Greek wedding on that one. All right. Thanks very much for listening, guys. And I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.